Hello everyone and welcome back to Jackal Educational Channel. So this is the part 9 of the unit 1 syllabus wise preparation for the net environmental science paper. Yes, this is the unit wise preparation according to the syllabus of net and we have already completed 8 parts. If you haven't checked, then check the link given in the description below. So without wasting much time, let's get started. So today we are going to discuss on the very important topic that is composition and structure of the atmosphere. So it will be very interesting and we will see first of all the study of atmosphere is known as the atmospheric science and it is the study of atmosphere, its process and phenomena. So I would request you to take out your notes and pen and paper because the main points you should note it down, it will be very helpful in the examination. So main main points I will be telling you try to note it down. So the first thing is atmosphere is an envelope or blanket of air extending up to and beyond 600 km from the earth's level. So this one is the level from here to beyond 600 km it is extending. So when the earth is scaled down to the size of an apple for example its atmosphere is no thicker than the skin on the apple. So it is the representation given as per the example of an apple. So next thing is the gravitational pull holds the earth atmosphere. So all the sphere you know stratosphere, mesosphere, thermosphere. So all these are hold together with the help of gravitational pull. Ji haan, ye jo gravitational pull hai, jo earth ka in sare layers ko hold karke rakta hai. Next thing is atmosphere has no top. So there is no top region we can say that's the limit. So it gradually thins out with the altitude. So when we move up there is the thinning of the layer we see. Next is atmosphere is the mixture of permanent as well as variable gases. So what are these permanent gases and variable gases we will know in the coming slides. Next is the primitive atmosphere that means initially when the earth was formed in the primary stage it was reduced and it had hydrogen, helium, methane and ammonia gases. So these are also important. Kindly note down these are the primitive gases present in the initial stage of the atmosphere formation in our earth. Next is volcanoes contribute to the nitrogen and argon. So these points are not that much important. And life is produced from the oxygen and cycling of carbon. So this is important. Life is produced from the oxygen and cycle carbon. Next thing we will go to the next slide and we will see what is the composition of atmosphere. So before moving to the composition of atmosphere I want to remind you that last slide we discussed about permanent gases and variable gases that is variable constituents of the atmosphere. So permanent constituents means these gases remain constant by percentage. So inka jo pratisat hai atmosphere mein hamesa ek constant rehta hai. They never variate that much. So they are constant. What are these gases? These are nitrogen, oxygen, argon, neon, helium, krypton and hydrogen. So, these gases are permanent gases, kahenge, permanent constituents of the atmosphere. So, what are variable constituents? So, these gases have changing concentration, so opposite of the constant that is they are changing in their concentration over a finite time. So, what are these? They are water vapor, these gases, carbon dioxide, methane, ozone and several other gases. So these four are important. So the water vapor, carbon dioxide, methane and ozone are the variable constituents. So let's talk about the water vapor. So water vapor in the atmosphere is approximately less than 0.25% of the total constituent but we see that on the earth it is 3 by 4 that is 75% is water and this water concentration, water vapors concentration decreases with elevation. So as we move higher in the atmosphere the water concentration decreases and also surface values vary. So how this value varies? If the atmosphere is taken above the desert region it is very very lesser than 1 percentage. In tropics the water vapor percentage on the atmosphere will be 4 percentage whereas in the mid latitude it is from 1 to 2 percentage. Next coming to the carbon dioxide level. So carbon dioxide level it is the older one you should not get this one. So the current carbon dioxide level in the atmosphere is 410 ppm that is parts per million according to the 2019 latest report. So you should remember that this is also important. Next is ozone which is the variable constituents in the atmosphere and its concentration near the surface of the earth is about 0 0.04 to 0 0.15 ppm that is parts per million as you can see here and it can reach up to 15 parts per million in the 
upper atmosphere so that means it is talking about the stratosphere region where the ozone is maximum next coming to the aerosols so what are the aerosols present in the atmosphere they can be present in the form of dust smoke ashes pollen also microbes sea spray or salt water droplets ice crystals also sulfuric acid nitric acid all these things comes under aerosols in the atmosphere so here you can see in this representation that the atmospheric composition maximum part is played by nitrogen which is 78 percent followed by oxygen that is 21 percent argon is having the third highest composition with 0 0.9 percent and trace gases constitute 0 0.1 percentage and if we maximize this trace gases so if we consider only trace gases then among trace gases carbon dioxide is having the higher proportion that is 93 percent approximately followed by the neon then helium then methane then nitrous oxide and then ozone so this is also important kindly note it down so let's move to the next slide this is important because our atmosphere is divided into homosphere and heterosphere so what is this we'll know here so homosphere ka matlab hota hai these are the three atmospheric layers that are troposphere stratosphere and mesosphere those who are forming this layer known as homosphere so it is up to 80 to 100 kilometer altitude from the earth's surface that is called as homosphere region and the next thing is there is the turbulent mixing is seen in this region because of the solar radiation accelerates atoms and molecules present in them and the collision of atoms or molecules even out the energy distribution next coming to the heterosphere so the heterosphere kise kahenge heterosphere incorporates most of the thermosphere and all of the exosphere region so if you don't know this sphere no need to worry we will be teaching you in the next slide we will learn together next is this heterosphere is beyond 80 km altitude so as we have discussed homosphere ka jo hai region it lies till 80 to 100 km and above that heterosphere comes so it is starting beyond 80 km altitude so gases are stratified they are in strata so heavier molecules that are like nitrogen and oxygen are at the lower altitude in case of heterosphere region and lighter ones like hydrogen and helium they are present at higher altitude so they are lighter that's why they move to the upper part in the heterosphere next important thing you should note it down is that here the escape velocity at the top of the heterosphere region the atoms behave like ballistic objects so ballistic object means their velocity often exceeds escape velocity so escape velocity kya hai so the speed that an object needs to be traveling to break free of a planet or moon's gravity well and leave it without further propulsion so that means after a certain point from above the ground of the earth level if the object is kept as it is it will not come back so that much speed we need to put out the object from the earth's surface to that point from where it is free and it can travel without any need of gravity so it is out of gravity it can move freely so for that reason the escape velocity of earth it is considered as 11 km per second so that's the escape velocity you should also note it down let's move to the next slide here we will know that the atmosphere is not only divided into these seven spheres and all it is divided based on the two categories number one is thermal structure so as you can see based on the temperature changes they are changed into troposphere stratosphere mesosphere thermosphere and exosphere but based on magnetoelectronic structure also the layers of atmosphere are characterized yes for some of you this will be the new concept and we will today learn this new concept only because this thermal structure we are going to discuss in the next video it is simple and if you haven't checked the trick to learn these layers you can check the link given in the description below you can get an idea about this so let's start the magnetoelectronic structure and the classification of the atmosphere so according to this magnetoelectronic structure the upper atmosphere of our earth is divided into the regions based on the behavior and number of free electrons yes as it is mentioned electronic so electron ka role yahan pe play karta hai and other charge particles so their behavior their number and this thing also comes to play magneto so we will learn why magneto is used and according to these rules three regions are divided ionosphere plasma sphere and magnetosphere so this is magnetosphere 
this is plasma sphere this is ionosphere so we'll know one by one they are very simple and we'll know only the basics no need to go deep because we will learn according to the net perspective and which is important for the exam so first is ionosphere so it is defined by the atmospheric effects on the radio wave propagation as a result of the presence and variation in the concentration of free electrons in the atmosphere so here it is telling that in the atmosphere there are several free electrons are present and what is the effect when the radio wave propagates accordingly this ionosphere these layers are divided for example here this is the radio transmitter and here the radio waves will transmit so when they will move up they will be having certain refraction certain refraction so all these things will be taken place according to the presence of electrons in this region so as per this this is called as ionosphere because ions are present electrons and here this region is also divided into three important regions so that is important to know first is d region which is the initial part in the ionosphere next is e region next is f region so f is the uppermost part in the ionosphere and f region is also divided further into f1 and f2 so f1 this is not about f1 racing this is about the ionosphere region that is f1 and f2 region so these things you can note it down that ionosphere first layer is d layer followed by e and f and f is divided into f1 and f2 one more thing i want to tell you that d region disappears at night so it is not present during night next move to the next thing that is plasma sphere so yes plasma sphere means there will be something related to plasma let's see what is this this plasma sphere is not really spherical so it is not spherical in structure but a donut shaped region so donut shaped means it will be like this and here in between there will be hollow space so with the hole aligned with the earth's magnetic axis and this will be in solid shape this earth's plasma sphere is made of just that a plasma which is the fourth state of matter so three states are solid liquid and gas and fourth state is plasma which is present in the plasma sphere we will know in the next slide when we will see the photo it will be very easier so this plasma sphere this plasma is mostly composed of hydrogen ions that is protons and electrons so this is important note down these things and it has a very sharp edge called as the plasma pause so it is also important the sharp edge present in the plasma sphere region in the atmosphere is called as plasma pause next is this plasma sphere is essentially an extension of the ionosphere inside of the plasma pause geomagnetic fields line rotate with the earth so geological that magnetic fields of earth rotate with the earth inside the plasma pause so this picture will tell you how this plasma pause look like so as you can see here this is our earth and ionosphere is surrounding it it is a solid sphere but plasma sphere is like donut so here hollow region is there and it is surrounding the earth from all over the side of the earth so as you can see geomagnetic field lines rotate with earth this plasma pause region so i hope it is clear it is very simple no need to go deep and think much now it's time for the magnetosphere so this magnetosphere is a cavity so it is also a cavity first of all ionosphere is a solid spherical structure then we read about the plasma sphere which is like a donut then magnetosphere it is a cavity in which the earth's magnetic field is constrained by the solar wind and interplanetary magnetic field so this is what imf so this imf is a part of the sun's magnetic field that is carried into interplanetary space by the solar wind so we'll know one by one so what is this imf and what is first of all we should know what is sun's magnetic field and what is solar wind so here if we can assume that this is earth earth this is our earth and here sun is situated so here from here solar wind will be flowing so it will be blowing from here towards the earth these things are the solar wind which are carrying the sun's magnetic field so these are carrying the sun's magnetic field which is the part of playing in the interplanetary magnetic field so it is also known as hmf so you should note that it is also known as hmf so ye hmf kya hai so it is very simple the full form is heliospheric magnetic field so note it down interplanetary magnetic field or heliospheric magnetic field now we will see the outer boundary of the magnetosphere is called the magnetopause so yahan pe bhi ek pause aa gaya hai so in last part what we have read the sharp 
like extension of the plasma sphere is known as plasma pause and here also the extension which is the called as magneto pause that is the outer boundary of the magnetosphere so it is shaped like an elongated teardrop like a christmas tree ornament so it will be elongated one as you can see it will be like this we will see in the next slide and tail pointing away from the sun so let's see how it looks like so this is the actual simple picture of magnetosphere so here this is our planet earth this looks so small in front of this whole magnetosphere and this whole thing is called the magnetosphere where magneto sheets are present which are the outer covering like a sheath and here one more point you have to note that magnetosphere this whole magnetosphere region when it extends like a teardrop as the tapered end so this end will be called as the magneto tail so your tail position is pointing away from the sun it is called as magneto tail so kindly note it down so these things are important which i have discussed no need to go deep so in the next video we will discuss more about the atmospheric layer as per the temperature so stay tuned for the further updates and if you want to follow our channel do subscribe and hit the notification icon to get the updates as soon as i upload any video